Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with John Cale, a security officer in charge of accompanying the president's spokesman, Eli Raphelson. He drives him to the White House, and then picks up his daughter, Emily, after performing his duty. He takes her to the White House. To impress Emily, John even applies for a position as a presidential guard. Carol Finnerty, who was John's college acquaintance, is the one who interviews him. Carol turns down John's application to be a presidential guard, after learning about his background. To avoid disappointing Emily, John is obliged to lie to her. She notices a tour group, and decides to join them. The tour group is led by John in the gallery room. Emily inquires about the location of the restroom, and leaves. Martin Walker, the president's secret service chief, sees that Carol is despondent, so he urges her to take leave. Carol agrees, and promptly returns home. In the capital chamber, a mysterious stranger places a trolley of cleaning materials, in the center of the chamber. The trolley explodes, causing alarm among others in the vicinity. They are all inspected right away, including Rap Helson and the vice president, who are nearby. The vice president is immediately evacuated aboard an Air Force plane, accompanied by bodyguards and Jenna, his assistant. A squad of terrorists infiltrate the facility, and swiftly carry out the attack, killing all of the guards. John, concerned about Emily, instantly contacts her, but a terrorist breaks into John's room at the same time. Fortunately, John is able to avoid their attack. He instantly follows Emily to the restroom. Meanwhile, Martin is waiting for a helicopter to bring him up, but the chopper is successfully sabotaged by terrorists patrolling the building's roof. When Martin hears this, he quickly leads the president to the bunker. When John gets to the restroom, he is surprised by a terrorist, but he manages to kill him. Turning to Martin, John takes the terrorist's pistol and radio. When he arrives at the bunker, he immediately executes all of the guards. Martin deceives the president, and nurses a vendetta against him. Earlier, the president had assigned his son, Kevin, to head a secret operation, but the mission failed, and Kevin was killed. Martin contacts his fellow terrorist, Stentz, who is the terrorist group's head, and asks him to pick up the president. When John overhears Martin's chat on the radio, he instantly steps in to assist the president. Finally, John is able to save the president, and escape to the elevator. The terrorists attempt to pursue John, but are unsuccessful. John and the president are apparently hiding on top of the elevator. The president explains why Martin deceived him, and states that he needs an anti-trace phone to call for assistance, and the phone is in his room on the second level. They climb upstairs right away, climbing through the pipe. At the same time, Raphelson is on his way to the Pentagon, where he is hailed by the general. Moving on to the terrorists, we're shown Skip Tyler, the terrorist group's hacker. He plants surveillance cameras and bombs in the basement, and proceeds to the computer center area, and hacks everything there. Emily, who is photographing the terrorists, abruptly enters a message on her cell phone, causing a terrorist to become aware of her presence and locate her. She posts the footage on YouTube, before being detained. She is detained among other hostages. Moving to John, just as he is about to open the elevator door, suddenly it moves up, and they are almost squashed. They are trapped and unable to move for some time. At the Pentagon Defense Center, they are holding a meeting with the Vice President. The senior officials decide to use the 25th Amendment, which requires the inauguration of a new president, in order to prevent unfavorable events from occurring. Carol attempts to negotiate with the White House, but it is Martin who answers the phone. Carol is taken aback, because he is the architect behind the uprising. Martin demands a $400 million ransom, to ensure the president's safety. Carol, on the other hand, has a strategy, that involves picking up Martin's wife, and convincing him to surrender. Back to John. The elevator soon descends, and he and the president dash to fetch the anti-trace phone. When they find the phone, John calls his friend Nabel. The phone is then connected to the vice president, and when he answers it, it is instantly connected to the Pentagon. Carol is taken aback by John's ability to save the president, she had been underestimating John, who was incompetent at work all along. Carol directs them to the hidden passageway. But then John is apprehended by two terrorists, one he manages to eliminate. The president also takes action, assassinating the other. Carol orders John to turn on the television, and watch the news. According to the news, Emily was able to record the terrorist operations. John grows agitated, because Emily is obviously in danger. Moving to Martin, he notices a magazine close by, and recognizes right away, the president would use the anti-tracking phone to call for assistance. Martin and the terrorists hurry straight to his room, but when they get there, there is nothing inside. 
They watch the television broadcast, while John and the president are hiding in the chimney, and after watching the news, they go to Emily, and snatch her cell phone. After escaping, John immediately heads underground, as Carol had instructed. They instantly track down the terrorists, turning to the Pentagon and viewing the video footage on television. They turn out to be former special forces personnel turned mercenaries. When John arrives underground, he splits from the president. However, the terrorists previously installed surveillance cameras are able to trace their movements. The president attempts to exit, but Tyler has rigged the door with a bomb. Tyler knows the president is in the basement, so he enlists the help of his friends to track him down. After discovering the presence of the terrorists, John instantly picks up the president, and they move away from there. They get into a shootout, but John is getting cornered, so he has to find another way out, and they eventually make it to the auto garage. The terrorists pursue John and the president from behind, as they flee in the cars nearby. The chase is unavoidable, and the media crew observe it live. Shortly, John notices Emily held captive by a terrorist, and as a result, he is successfully immobilized by an RPG rocket, and bounced into the pool. John and the president exit the car, and enter the chamber right away. When Stance notices them, he instantly opens fire with a machine gun. The bullet strikes a gas cylinder, causing a massive explosion. Martin searches for their bodies, but is unable to locate them. Then he notices the underground passage's door is open. Inside the Air Force One, the vice president is sworn in as the new president. At the Pentagon, where Martin's wife arrives not long after, who tries to convince him to surrender, but after learning of his goal, she supports him. Carol requests assistance from an officer present, who promptly inquires as to who the terrorists are affiliated with. Back to John, after they flee the explosion, he attends to the president's injury. According to John, his daughter is interested in politics, and the job of presidential bodyguard. Back at the Pentagon, the vice president devises an airborne attack, employing General Caulfield Black Hawks. The general contacts John, and reveals that he has air missiles. When John hears this, he instantly goes to the building's roof, to assist the Black Hawk forces. The adversaries, however, take out the Black Hawks one by one, with RPGs. A gunfight follows between John and the terrorists. Stance even comes face to face with John. They both fall off the roof, but Stance is saved by a terrorist. Fortunately, John is able to flee. Stance, who pursues him, discovers a ticket that John had dropped, and eventually discovers that Emily is John's daughter. Tyler, who had hacked into the computer network, is ordered by Martin to shoot the Air Force One carrying the Vice President. As a result, the Vice President and others die instantly on the plane. Hearing the news, the President's spokesman is promptly sworn in as the next President. After being sworn in, Rap Helson directs General Caulfield to use Raptor fighter planes, to destroy the White House. Stance, who knows Emily is John's daughter, immediately takes her to Martin. Martin threatens to kill his daughter if John doesn't hand over the President. John plans to submit, but the President arrives first. Then John calls Carol, and tells her that the President had been apprehended. Carol informs him the newly elected President has directed that the White House be destroyed, and John has only eight minutes to save his daughter. Next, Martin pushes the President to unlock the nuclear suitcase, since only the President can open it. The fire alarm goes off. It turns out John set fire to the President's quarters, on purpose, in order to distract them. Tyler tries to exit the White House through the basement door. But he remembers about the bomb, however, it's too late, and he dies. Back to the President, he attempts to immobilize Martin, but fails. Martin manages to open the nuclear briefcase, and after doing so, he quickly activates the nuclear code. Because of this, the situation inside the Pentagon gets tense. Martin is busy typing the nuclear coordinate code, when he is attacked by the President. After a brief fight, Martin shoots the President. When John is infiltrating, he is unexpectedly attacked by Stance. Nevertheless, John defeats him, tying him to a vest containing a bomb, and detonating it. After finishing with Stance, John notices Martin holding Emily hostage. When Martin is working on the nuclear suitcase again, John arrives in a car, and crashes into Martin. When John sees Martin is still alive, he shoots him with a machine gun. Following that, he grabs Emily firmly, and tells her to leave the White House immediately, since a jet is on its way to destroy it. Emily takes a flag, and raises it in the park, as John goes to save the President. The pilot of the Raptor plane, who is about to attack the White House, notices Emily, and decides to abandon his operation. John is relieved, since Emily's actions were successful. The President appears from behind, and turns out Martin's bullet hit his wife's gift watch. Carol then contacts John, 
and informs him that everything is incomplete. Everything that happened turns out to be the result of someone acting behind the scenes. The only way to discover who did it is by checking Martin's cell phone. John instantly examines Martin's cell phone. Shortly after, Raphelson arrives at the White House, and is greeted by John. The president, according to John, is no longer alive. Then John reveals the new president's awful plan, who reveals out to be the brain behind all the White House attacks. The messages the president sent to Martin proves everything. Raphelson informs John that no one would believe him, because he is now the president. The real president suddenly emerges, and orders the general to arrest Raphelson. It turns out that Raphelson has been opposing America's peace treaty with the Middle Eastern country. When the president is about to board the helicopter, he directs John to accompany him, and John formally becomes the president's security guard. John requests Emily to accompany him. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.